Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to look at how you can use arrays with functions inside Excel VBA. So let's go ahead and look at our example. So here you can see we have our array here, I guess you can call it that. It's kind of a range, but we're going to, for our purposes, call it an array. Remember, we define an array as multiple columns and multiple rows being selected or used together in combination for whatever purpose. And so here is our array. And so what I want to do here is similar to what we did with subroutines, I want to try to count how many remainders I have when I put in a specific number. That is my goal. And so this is going to be very similar to the video on the subroutine in, in arrays, but instead of having an input box in uh, for the subroutine to do the calculation behind the scenes, we are going to just create a function that serves a similar purpose. So let's go over to the developer now. And so there's a lot of stuff that we have to put in to get things going. You probably don't need to put option base one in this particular instance, but we're just going to go ahead and do that. And now we have to put in um, our function. We're going to call it remainder count. And it's going to take two uh, arguments, if you will, RNG as range. That's what that's going to be. And in as integer. Okay. And then the output of this particular function is going to be an integer as well. Now we have the demo variables. And again, a lot of this is really repetition. We're just having a slightly different purpose. So we have to dim our I. That's going to be for our rows, J for columns. We're going to have to uh, also dim something to count the number of rows and the number of columns, so in our NC. And we're also going to have to dim some sort of a count variable where it counts when a certain number has a remainder. So we're going to go ahead and put all that in. So you can see right here that all of our variables have been dimmed and declared. The ones I mentioned before, I and J, in our number of rows, in C, number of columns, and of course C is kind of our counting variable. And then in R, the number of rows is going to be determined by using uh, rng.rows.count. That's what we're going to be doing there. That function there is going to count the rows. Then the same thing for the columns. And now the next thing we have to do is, is we have to make our for loop. It's going to be a nested for loop. We've done this several times and it's going to iterate across uh, the row first and then go down to the next uh, down, uh, excuse me, iterate across the columns first then go down to the next row as you've seen in prior videos. So we're going to go ahead and start typing this in. All right, you can see that our nested for loop is created. So, so for i, that's going to be, of course, for our rows equals 1 to nr. So nr is flexible because it, de it depends on how many rows we have. While that's going on, j to nc, the number of columns, and it's going to look at the range of cells, i and j. When the modulus, the modulus is kind of like, you know, the, the uh, remainder, we've talked about that. When that is greater than, greater than or equal to one, then we're going to increase our C variable by one, you know, one unit, basically one. And so then it'll, it'll continue to do that. And then of course, when you want to get the output of your function, the output of the function is going to be set to C and then we end the function. So it looks like everything is set up. Now, one difference between a function and a subroutine is that you can't, you know, you cannot use F8 to kind of walk your way through the code while it's happening. You just have to kind of go run the, the function inside the worksheet and see what happens. So let's do this. We're now inside the worksheet. You don't even have to highlight the cells. We're just going to put our new cell here in C, C1. We're going to call the function. So it's called remainder count. And our first argument is going to be the range. And then we have to pick a number that we want to divide all these numbers by. And that will be able to allow us to, to count the remainder or to get the modulus. So I'm going to pick two. And if I press enter, I get a number of four. So that means that, let's see here. Well, nine, 27, 37, and 19, they're all going to have a, a remainder. That is why our number is four. If I change the number inside this function, I'm going to obviously get a different result. So let's say I change it to you know, how about the number five? And this time I get a number of six because whenever you divide any of these numbers by five, you always have a remainder. That is why I have a 
uh, answer of six here in terms of how many of these numbers have a remainder when you divide them by five. So it appears that our function is working appropriately and we have achieved our purpose. So let me see if I can go back and summarize what we talked about and conclude this video. So in this video, we learned how to team up functions with arrays. And our goal in particular was to take a range of data, we also can call this an array, to take an array and determine how many of these numbers, when you divide them, they have a remainder based on whatever number you pick, two, three, four, five, whatever. And so to do this, you can see the code right here. We had to declare our function first, obviously. Um, had two arguments, the range, whatever that, that was going to be, and also in whatever number we wanted to divide the numbers in our array by. And then we had to set up our, our, our variable for our rows and our columns, for counting our rows, for counting our columns. And of course, for counting how, how many numbers meet our criteria that when they're divided by our n, whatever we pick, there will be some sort of a remainder. And so after that, you have to have your nested for loop down here at the bottom. Uh, where it goes through, it goes across the columns first and then goes down to the next row. And then the output is going to be whatever C is finally set to. So that's a simple way of doing this. Of course, there's more than one way that we could have achieved what we did here, but this is how we chose to do it in this video. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Take care.